I want to show a relatively compact little script that I was cooking up today for Dynamo. And I'm just going to fire it up here. Uh, what I've got is I've got a basic Revit environment. Uh, the only trick up my sleeve here is that over here in the uh, loaded families, I've got a panel. It's uh, no great mystery, this panel. It's just four point panel with a hole in it. And what I want to do with that guy today is I want to place it driven by uh, spreadsheet data. So if I go and I take a look, I've got a nice little spreadsheet that has uh, a bunch of XYZ coordinate information. What's important about here is that we've got uh, each line, of which there are I think 170 or something, uh, made by any application that can export coordinate points from it. Um, so I've got groups of three, uh, which is basically X, Y, Z coordinate, X, Y, Z coordinate, X, Y, Z coordinate, to make groups of four. So each line represents essentially a four-cornered four panel in coordinate space. So this is basically, a, you know, sort of a common way to interchange uh, geometry data between different applications. So I've got my spreadsheet. It's got all my data in it. I'm good. Now... What I want to do with it is I want to figure out how to get that data into Revit in the form of Revit families. So I've got a file I'm going to open up that uh, contains this information. And I'll share these on the site for your later dissection. So I've got panel reconstitute. This is kind of like, you know, when you add the water back into the powdered milk to turn it back into something. So I'm just going to zoom in here for a second to show you this file. Uh, it's not terribly complicated because, well, because my spreadsheet data is pretty good to start off with, so I don't have to worry too much about parsing the data out. So what I've got is I've got a file browser, so I click on the file browser and I can browse to my spreadsheet, right? And I'm going to take that data out of the spreadsheet. I'm going to open the Excel workbook. I'm going to get a worksheet. You know, it's just all the data is on sheet one. I'm going to extract the data from it. And uh, if I put in a watch node here, I can sort of see what's happening along the way here with the data. So I'm just going to say, let's see what happens when I get the data from the worksheet. Uh, well, the first thing that you can see actually is that it, it boots up the Excel spreadsheet and actually opens it up so you can see what's going on with it. The other thing that it does is it goes in and it reads that data. So you can see here's my top column and here are my 12 pieces of information that come from that uh, top row. 1, 4.7, 3 .9, 1, 4.7, 3.9, etc, etc, etc. So now I've got my raw data coming in, right? <coughs> well, I'm going to go in and I've got an XYZ from list of numbers. Basically what this does is that it says, okay, you give me a list of numbers and I'm going to parse it out, you know, basically three at a time and come back out with uh, XYZ coordinate points. Because I'm passing it a list of lists, I'm going to need to actually um, work on that with a map, which basically a map says I want to do a certain operation on a bunch of stuff. Well, the bunch of stuff is this list of lists. So for each list, for list 0, I want to go through and I want to say, give me XYZ coordinates for each one of these. Okay, so that's fine. So now that I've got my uh, XYZ coordinate points coming out of that map, you can see now I've got groups of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, of XYZ coordinate points. Those are the corner points for each one of my panels. All good. So I'm going to pass that. First I'm just going to preview it because I want to just sort of make sure that it's doing the right thing. And I'm going to make a line through each one of those groups of points. And if I pass that in and I run that, I can zoom out and I can see that in fact I've got a sort of coherent piece of geometry. And I can just take a look in here and say, yep, that's what it looked like in my other application. I've got my sort of swoopy-doopy form, and I've got it broken up into little quadrilateral panels. Good. So now that I know that all of my data is coming out the right way, I can commit to saying, I haven't noticed I haven't made anything in Revit yet. This is still just, you know, whatever. So I'm going to go into my 3D view just so I can see when this stuff pops out. 
And, you know, one of the reasons that I want to go and preview all this stuff is because, as we know, when you make Revit families, sometimes it takes a little while. So I'm going to just make sure that all my data is in the right place before I go and commit to making some stuff out of it. So I've got the same information of XYZs coming out that I was making lines from. So it's a pretty good approximation. I've got a select family type drop down here, which just allows me to sort of pick any family that's loaded into the project. And so remember, again, I'm, I'm still in the project environment. This is RVT. So I'm going to pick my aperture panel. I'm going to pipe that guy into the family input, and I've got my XYZs there. So I'm going to say run, and I might pause just because it makes better television. And I go run, and it's going to think about it for a minute, and yeah, I'll just pause it for a second. I'll let you know how long it took to do this operation. And here we are back again. That took about 20 seconds to reconstitute all those panels. Now you can see here I am in my Revit environment where I've got all of those panels placed according to the preview. It was a pretty good approximation of what I was going to get. Uh, here we'll see that. Here was the preview of that geometry that I was looking at that was fast and easy to see. This one is a little bit slower but still got made not too bad. It was about 20, 20 seconds, something like that. So now I've got my real Revit elements, which are real panels with real properties and real parameters, just like any other Revit element. Um, and then the nice thing is, is that if I go back in and um, somebody needs to make some changes back in the other uh, software that generated this spreadsheet, then I can just reload this Excel spreadsheet and rerun it and I still am going to be just moving around the parameters of the same families. I don't have to remake them every time that something gets changed. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to put these files on. Um, there's not too much to this. Part of it depends on having well-organized data in your spreadsheet. But uh, otherwise, uh, I hope this was helpful and maybe you can give it a try. Thanks.